So the work on display is really, it represents about four years worth of, of, of work that I've made, um, traveling around and through the Appalachian Mountains, out to the kind of the lower um, Rockies out in Wyoming, um, some in Yellowstone and the Tetons, but a large part of it is also the stuff in between. Um, I'm just really fascinated with the plains, the Great Plains, the upper, upper Great Plains are, uh, you know, it's, it's really a very different environment. You have to spend time there to really kind of absorb the subtleties of it. And I just am fascinated by it. It's one of the most endangered ecosystems in the world. Um, and it's right here in the States. And we don't hear much about it because it's just continue, it's more of it's disappearing every day than any place else in the world. And so I think it's, it's not only important from that aspect because of the environmental impact, um, but it's really, I mean, we even refer to it as the flyover area of the country, right? And it's really an area that has its own unique beauty that I just find fascinating. I, my background is I am trained, I went to college in architecture. Um, so I, have, I actually have a master's degree in architecture from Washington University in St. Louis and an undergrad from Miami University here in Oxford. And that has really kind of prepared me in a way for all of this because um, both of those programs are very firmly rooted in the art tradition. So learning the basics of composition, um, you know, just has really helped inform how I think about you know, photography, because um, photography is an expressive art, in my opinion, and finding, you know, that kind of compositions within the landscape and in, you know, whatever's going on around me, um, really just finding a way to express that to the viewer and engage the viewer and make a compelling shot. Like Ansel Adams used to say, there's two people in every photograph, it's the photographer and the viewer. So I, I look at it that way, is what am I trying to say through the photograph? What do I want the viewer to feel, the emotion I want him to feel? I want to impart some emotional impact with the pictures I make. So I usually don't know that it's the shot. Um, a lot of times it's just working with something and you keep working it. You know, you generally, I generally have a, a vague or, or kind of just notion in my head of what I'm trying to get and you just keep working at it and I walk away, you know, I, I look in a landscape a lot of times and I know there's a picture there and I have to find it. I feel like it's just me really revealing something that's already there. Sometimes it clicks and, you know, it happens pretty fast. Sometimes it could take me years. I mean, I've just got returned from a trip to the Smoky Mountains and I've been chasing, chasing a shot there for probably over 10 years and just the conditions I think finally came together and I, and I hope I got it, you know, I hope I got the shot. I, I do have a picture in my, my mind. I try to not be too, you know, you can't, you, you have to be flexible in, in that image because it's never exactly as you envision it. But yes, there is um, the element of visualizing the shot before you get there so that you kind of have an idea. Like I said earlier, I, I, I sometimes will look at a landscape. I know there's a picture there. I, try and, I have to try and find it. And it's basically because I'm just not seeing it in my mind's eye. Um, sometimes beforehand, I do have some notion of, of what I'm visualizing with that shot. But quite often, it's, it's a combination of the two, finding the conditions that are right, and then working with kind of that notion that I have or that visualization of the image that I have in my mind. So I, I use, I do photograph with a digital camera, so it does record everything in, in color. A lot of times, you know, some of the images I do work on, I do do color work as well. But all we have at this exhibit is black and white because that is my, my, my love. I do really love doing black and white photography. I think it is kind of the purest expression. It, it's more evocative, I, I think. I love the feel of it. Um, I just think it removes that Removing the color from the image just helps really get down to the pure elements. It's a little more emotional. And, but again, it all starts with the digital file. Um, I will then work with the files in, you know, in, in Photoshop and, and you know, that stuff to produce some of the images like this. And then I also do some silver gelatin prints, which are traditional darkroom prints. So I'll start again, start with the digital file and then create a negative that I then go into the darkroom and make um, will make silver gelatin prints in the darkroom. The prints just have a completely different feel to them. The way the light reflects off the silver 
emulsion is a lot different than it does off of the ink on, on the surface of the paper. My work's available online, and I have a, um, a website. Um, it's tomcrossphoto.com. Um, it shows basically all, I, all my black and white work as well as my color work. And it has all the contact information right there for um, phone number. I'm on Facebook and Instagram if somebody's interested in looking me up there. It's the same, just my name. And I'm happy to answer any questions. If anybody has a question about anything, it's, you, know, you can just send me an email and I'll, I'll get back to you. Having the show here, was, it was just great, especially after coming out of the pandemic. Um, things were shut down. A lot of um, exhibits and a lot of places that I show work were, didn't happen for over a year and a half. Um, and I found out how much I really missed having that opportunity to, to have get your work out there. So this was what, really one of the first ones since everything has been kind of op starting to come back to life. And it's just, I really, really loved it. It was great to see. It's always great to see your work in a different place, you know. Um, it's usually stacked up at home. So it's right, it's kind of nice to see it actually hung on a wall. The venue here is just, it's beautiful. It shows the work off really well, I feel, and you know, it was just, I really appreciated the opportunity to be able to, to show here. Um, I, you know, what I'm working on now is, it's basically some, it's a continuation of things I've been doing. I'm still, um, as I said, this work I have here has been probably taken me over four years to assemble this images. So I'm still working with things in the prairie and the plains. I, I'm just, again, working with nature as my theme. Um, I just find all my inspiration from that. So I'm working with that, and usually, you know, I have a project that I'm trying to put together on the on the plains, and just trying to get more, um, you know, work in the, into the mountains and, and things like that. It's just um, find, you know, continuing to look for look for images that are compelling and tell the story of of you know our natural our natural world. Um, I, you know, I, I really select the size for the photos, kind of based on the content and what it is. Um, so, like some of these landscape shots, I love to make them big because it's again, it, it's kind of when I make the photograph. Again, I said I want to evoke an emotion with the photograph, and it's kind of what I try and do is get a response from the the, the viewer that is similar to, to the response I felt when I was there. And so, a lot of these big landscapes, you know, you have to engaged in the landscape. You have to get into the landscape to actually experience it. And so I try and do that with the photographs by making them large. You can't just walk up to a really large photograph and just look at it for a second. You have to take the time, similar to you do when you do in when you're in the landscape. So you take time, you have to scan over the image, you look at different parts of it, you know, and you kind of wander through it. And so making them large just I think helps engage the viewer in that experience. If I was to give a tip to a new photographer, I would say get out, take lots of pictures, and enjoy what you're doing. Don't worry about Photoshop, and don't worry about what your camera does, and what you can, just get out and do it and have fun.